out. Hello, good uh, night, good afternoon, good uh, morning, everybody uh, around the world. Uh, this is an informal uh, Google Summer of Code um, office hour. Uh, today is the 13th uh, in April. Informal because we're currently in, in the review and ranking of the proposal. So we're just hanging there and having uh, interesting questions or topics uh, to discuss. And I believe uh, Mukul had um, an interesting question where he wanted to have some reflections on uh, experiences that he had. So Mukul, go ahead. Uh, so uh, my question is like, uh... So I start, uh, for example, I start with a GitHub repo or a open source project, like assume an open source project. And uh, I, uh, for approaching that project, like people say, you don't have to understand the whole code base to work on a issue or something on a, or implementing a feature. So uh, what I do is like, I go to the, uh, source file like uh, main dot uh, for example if i am working with go project like i will go to the main dot go and see what uh, that is calling or what the main function is calling and from there i approach uh, to the other functions call that they are uh, calling and so uh, but i think this is inefficient uh, like uh, i have to do whole uh, review of the code base to understand what is going on and uh, what I can do uh, like for that feature. Like uh, assume that um, I have to search for a file, like for a feature, uh, for a feature implementation, I want to search for a file, like where I can put that feature. But for this understanding itself, I have to understand uh, the code base itself to some extent. Uh, so how can I proceed with the uh, understanding of the code base, uh, like understanding uh, from the main function itself uh, takes a lot of time. So how do you now, do this? Now, it's, this question is a beautiful one. And I will give the word to, to Mark because I think he has some good experiences there. Just want to say there, this is a, a key question and if you master this type uh, of, of action, so getting into a code base, I think you have the key for an interesting and rewarding professional career, because this will be so often that you will have to uh, deal with these kind of things. So Mark, what are the kind of tips, advice, or experience that we can share uh, with Mukul? So I think first, first the most fair thing, Mukul, to highlight is that's the reality of software engineering for the foreseeable future. You will spend a lot more time reading code than writing code. Some of the smartest programmers I've ever known have consistently and repeatedly told me they spend much more time reading code than writing it. So, so the reality is this is ahead of you for a very long time, this ratio of read versus write, because you've got to understand first. So, so no shame. That's good. That's... Uh, now on the, on the sneaky tricks to understand a code base sooner. Okay. I'll, I'll share a couple of sneaky tricks that I have and let other people speak up. Sneaky trick. Number one is run the product and see how it behaves. Watch it from a user experience to see how it behaves. After watching how it behaves as a user experience, run the product from a debugger, set breakpoints on things that you find interesting, and try to hit them. And the, the, the indicator there is, oh, oh, I did get it. I know how this code is behaving, or I didn't. And, and so the debugger is my friend for code comprehension. Other people probably have different techniques, but for me, I like a debugger and looking at the code to see what it does, how it how it works, and what my experience is using it. Inevitably, I discover in the debugger that things I thought I knew, I did not in fact know, or what I knew was false. That's all that I'd offer. 
Yeah, and, and this is basically uh, it. Like a scientist, you take your your magnifying glass and you look and you try to see, oh, the code went, th went through there. And when I touch this button, this then happens or, or that. It's exactly uh, observing. Another tip I'm going to add before giving the word to whoever wants to, to add there is a very good entry point is looking for tests and the tests that have in the name end-to-end -end or integration or these kinds of things. They tend to activate multiple pieces. And once you understood the global functionality of what it is, reading the tests uh, exposes in more details. Uh, this is what the code is supposed uh, to do. This happens. And the third tip is uh, that alter the code on, on, your, on your local copy and add signals or flags or, or things that you know, oh, I went through here. And if I change that value by hand, this is what happens, or this fails, or these kind of things. But it, it boils down to the same idea is trying by observing how it works to uh, to understand. Um, is, is there anyone else who has uh, experience on 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 that? Rajiv, Actually, Chris, yeah, go ahead. Add, like, uh, it's usually good practice to set yourself up as a user first, so you have the first hand experience of what to expect yeah. in every stage and every step. The functionality, right? Yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Very, very good. Is there some somebody else, Rajiv or? Yeah, just like I want to add, like the the best thing is to learn by doing. So this is like something uh, you just go through like rough. Uh, since I think um, uh, these the students are uh, these are all college students, so. Uh, they don't have like much uh, idea about the Jenkins. So whatever they read it, uh, they go through as a scratch, like a general uh, as a user perspective. So they get more overview of uh, something. So just like start with her as a user and just hit and trial, just learn by doing and just get, go through that. that that's a process. Yeah. Uh, there's something I'd like to add because I, I've seen that in a question of Mukul and I let him then afterwards react on that. Uh, so the question would be, you first try to understand the global picture of what the code base does, or do you only concentrate on the feature you're going to work on and, and you, you just fly into it and try to understand the piece that you're going to, to change? Mark, do you have an opinion on that before I, I give mine? I actually don't. I've I've done both and had varied results from either. Exactly. This was basically what what I wanted to say. Uh, it depends. It depends also from your nature. Uh, some people have a holistic approach. They first need to get the global picture to understand the various components, how they interact and how they live together. And the approach that we described that Chris was hinting to first to understand how it works on the surface, then start digging into it and peeling off the layers of the onion before you get. Others go immediately to the feature uh, and, and to the active item they, they want and then builds the global picture uh, of it. Mileage depends, depends on the case, depends on the way you, you, uh, you tackle uh, problems. So it, it really uh, 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 depends. So Mukul, you had a plate full of answer to your very interesting question. Is there something useful for you in it? Yes, yes. Uh, like, 
I basically try to run it. Uh, that's uh, what I do. And I uh, execute, I ex not execute, I like understand it from the main person and that's what I do. But uh, this still doesn't give me uh, what I was thinking like you, uh, I was thinking like you, uh, you must be using some tools or something like that will, that would have make it uh, easier for you. But uh, that wasn't the case. And you guys are also reading it, uh, understanding it by reading it. And that's how things work. Yeah. There's no miracle solution for that one. It depends. Mark, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I think I think your IDE is a good a good friend, right? Be sure you use it. Uh, saw read advice some years ago of people who advise specifically to spend time learning more about the features of your integrated development environment because it can help you mm -hmm. navigate code much more rapidly. Now that that's a personal skill you have to develop, not something anybody else can can really teach. It's how do I navigate from one symbol to another inside my integrated development environment? How do I set a breakpoint? How do I remove the breakpoint? How do I, all things that you're spending time intentionally learning how to use your IDE well uh, are a good thing. I, I happen to use a rather strange IDE environment and it works for me. Other people use more standard IDE environments, but knowing your environment and what works for you is really, is a, is a, can make your comprehension process faster. Yeah. Now I, I have one comment I'd like to to add uh, uh, to it. One of the conclusion of the discussion we have now is that reading the code is where mo where the majority of people start and spend a lot of time. And Mark shared that very experienced developers spend a huge amount of their time uh, doing that. That means that when you write your code, in fact, you're talking, literally talking to the people or to yourself in a couple of months that will read your code. And so be, be um, wary of that and, and, and try to help the person by choosing adequate variable names, method names, a, an adequate comment, not a comment, uh, this is a function that or, or a method that does this. Yeah, from the name, you can figure that. But why did you choose that algorithm? So it's a dialogue that you're setting up with the person uh, reading. You're not talking to the computer. He's clever enough and, and he doesn't need, you're talking to a human. Just wanted to add that. <laughs> and for the joke, I can... Um, I can add that uh, maybe remember that a person who's going to maintain your code is a psychopath that knows where you're living. So take care of him and don't try to make him angry. So uh, this is a little bit uh, uh, too far. But uh, remember, you're talking to either yourself or a colleague in a couple of months. Mukul, does that, does that help you? Uh, yes, I have another question. Uh, like you were talking about uh, choosing name for functions. So uh, assuming that uh, I have a feature request, uh, issue for feature request, and I create a function. Uh, now, what is happening that uh, that function is like uh, use, calling a function that is already implemented. But I didn't know about that, uh, that the function was present in the code base. So I created my own implementation of that function. So uh, how can I know uh, that that function was there or what can I do uh, about this? Like the function name, uh, it can differ by function name. Uh, like someone said that that function name should be XYZ and I have my uh, implementation that saying that ABC. So uh, now there will be two functions doing the same job while what I should be doing is using the function X, Y, Z that is already present. So uh, what can I do uh, to like handle this kind of situation? What would you do? Uh, currently, 
like uh, after I raise a PR, the maintainer will say that this is already present, use that, and I will fix that and uh, like look the, for the changes. This is well, okay, but you're you're waiting for somebody to 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 catch it up. Uh, uh, good yes, point, sir. and and this is where. But here, you wasting your time, or or you spending your time and the maintainer's time. So, uh, there might be other strategies. Mark, you wanted to say something. Interesting dialogue. Yeah. Okay. So, so recent story. Uh, I found by reading the Java doc of a particular test method, a test class called Jenkins Rule, that there were features inside that thing that, after many years of doing Jenkins development, I didn't realize they were there. Okay, no shame. I went in and started using them. So I think, Mukul, the, the correct answer is, great, you learn something, you won't have to learn that again. You're, you're, you're set. Uh, it's you solve the initial problem, write the function you needed. Somebody told you, hey, you know what, there's a way to simplify this. Great, now you've learned and you, you simplify it, revise it and, and keep going. It, it's, yeah. We start where we are and we learn more about the things. In my case, there were some impressively capable functions in Jenkins rule that some really smart people had created that I should have been using for a long time. And, and reading Javadoc would have been a good thing if I'd done it several years ago, but I wasn't at that point interested in reading the Javadoc, but I, I might have should have about that important piece. So it's okay. It, and, and this is the message. If you want to improve yourself, like getting to know the features of your IDE, which is a very good exercise, or another tip that I give to young young people is increase your typing skills uh, to increase your speeds, which are these. Uh, hey, you, you have a couple of, of uh, half an hour, an hour to spend. Hey, start digging into the code or the Java doc of the libraries that you're using can even be the, the Java ones and, uh, or, or the mainstream ones and have a look and say, oh yeah, I didn't know that, or this is, oh. And so you build up your passive knowledge of the features that are available. So, um, Mukul, before giving you back the word, I'm going to ask, are there comments on this or other questions I've seen? Did Sonali join uh, the call? Uh, Satak also uh, uh, joined the call. So I want to give you also a chance to either give your opinion on, on that or ask a question. Mukul is a very good questioner. Hello, good evening, everyone. Uh, good evening, Sonali. Something to share or ask? Um, uh, currently, I don't have anything. I've been busy with my exams. I also have an exam tomorrow. <laughs> so I was just studying mobile computing. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, we have five minutes left. Um, other questions, other topics? Uh, I have... Uh, no, uh, Mukul, I think Satak had a question. You you okay, had yeah. already a, a lot of CPU cycles for, for you. So I'll, leave, uh, I'll let Satak. Satak, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. So first of all, I'm having a lot of fun in these meetings. And uh, the questions I want to ask are not necessarily related to open source, but uh, more of uh, general career advice. So. Uh, my first question is that, uh, how do I negotiate my salary uh, while uh, in an interview? So I have that sort of question. That's, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Now, I can't give you advice on, on, uh, on, on that one. Uh, besides trying a baseball bat by, when discussing with, uh, during the interview. Uh, here, I will not be able to help you on that one. And uh, the only thing I can I can give you is uh, by increasing your market value. Let's say that way, 
building your experience and being able to show uh, uh, that to the recruiter uh, will make you in a better position uh, for these kind of discussions. And what we're doing here through open source is a wonderful way to build that experience. So this is why we're spending the time, not only for open source, but also for you, uh, that this is a, a win-win situation where the community gains from the people's work, but you as a human being learn. So you're increasing your market value as a developer with that. Now, how do you talk to an employer or uh, I, 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 I can't give any good advice, especially as it's very cultural. So it really depends from country to country. So I'm, I'm sorry for that one. It was an interesting question, for him, but that one, I, I'm, I'm sorry, unless Mark has or, or somebody else has. I'm sorry, salary negotiations are a, a, a country specific and a company specific thing. By all means, plan for it. Don't be shy about asking, uh, but ask the people around the organization where you're discussing what the expectations are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's good. It, U.S. salary negotiations, I'm confident, are quite different than salary negotiations in, in negotiations in India. I'm sure that Chris negotiates very differently in in Hong Kong and John Mark differently in Belgium, right? Each each yeah. has their own place and talk to, talk to people who are geographically near you, preferably also company near you, so that you understand what your choices are and what what options you've got. Yeah. Other question, Mukul, you had a question. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, this is basically about the uh, issues uh, that are marked as bug. So uh, how do we replicate uh, environment? Like this says uh, that the bug was produced in uh, XYZ uh, OS. So how do you guys like do that? Uh, do you use uh, AWS VMs or like local VMs? Because uh, if I use local VMs, uh, they are... I will have a uh, memory constraint, like I have uh, 16 GB RAM and I don't think uh, it will be enough to run the program uh, like in a nice way or in uh, a way. So how do you uh, like replicate a uh, environment which can uh, produce that bug? Mark, you want to say something or do you want, do you want me to start or yeah. go ahead, Mark. Try, try first with what you've got because what you've got is local to you, is convenient, easy, and fast. Try, yeah. try first with what you've got because the difference between your environment and the place where, it, where the bug was initially reported may not be relevant. And so your 16 gigabyte machine, your four gigabyte Raspberry Pi may be enough be. to duplicate the problem if that's what you've got locally. Uh, if you can't duplicate it, that's good information to tell to the person who reported the issue saying, I attempted to duplicate the problem. I took the following steps and couldn't. That will then help them understand, oh, okay, I did not give enough detail. And you give them back more detail saying, here's what I attempted. I ran this on this equipment with this environment and it didn't show the problem. And hopefully mm -hmm. they will realize, oh, I need to say more. If not, you can tell them, directly, please tell me how you duplicated the problem. Give me more precise steps. Yeah. This is exactly what I wanted to say. Very, very. Does that answer your question, Mukul? Uh, basically, uh, like uh, in few of the issues, uh, the maintainer like mentioned that the issue is repli uh, replicable. But for that, uh, for the logs or for I want to see what is happening wrong there. Uh, I have to uh, replicate that. So how can I do that? Like what you guys are, uh, what you guys do for that? I want to uh, ask that. Like the uh, problem is arising in specific environment, like specific OS or specific conditions only. Uh, so how do you guys are living? 
Go ahead, Mark. Well, so so if it truly is environment specific, that's impressive, right? Because that's rare. Yeah, it it's it's surprisingly rare. rare for it to be environment specific, but maybe it is that they say, hey, I only get this failure when I'm running on a system 390 mainframe, running ZOS, not running Linux on that system 390 mainframe from IBM. In that case, you can ask for log files, as you said, you can ask for log files, you can ask for diagnostics, you can inject additional diagnostics and give them a, 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 a new build and say, this build has these additional diagnostics that will help uh, but Someone I, I I very much trust calls that remote debugging and notes that it's very very difficult, right? It's very expensive because the round trip time is so slow. Yeah, and and here uh, focusing on trying to reproduce the environment uh, is is very seldom uh, required, uh, as Mark said. Uh, unless there, there's signals that show that it's environment specific because you have error messages in uh, in the operating system or you have memory related uh, problems. So, and, and try first based on the environment to reproduce the functional part, the sequence of steps that were, uh, that, that were uh, required. Hello to Tabby. It joined uh, the call. Thank you for turning the camera on. I, I like seeing the faces, so welcome aboard. So Mukul, did that answer your, your question? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Does somebody else have a, have a question? No, I'm going to ask because uh, Tabby opened her camera. Where are you calling in from? Hello, Mark. I'm calling from Kenya. Kenya. Okay, nice. So I'm very happy to to have uh, uh, a lady joining and also to have somebody from the African continent. So, very good. I just have a little return uh, over here. So welcome. Um, are there other questions or topics that uh, can be discussed today? Otherwise, we're slowly going to close uh, this call and meet again uh, next week. Note that mentors are very busy these days. So, <laughs> and org admins do a lot of chasing. Somebody wants to add? Something for uh, for this call or a question, comment, experience. Otherwise, I'm personally very happy to see the people joining. Abby? Um, I wanted to ask uh, now that we're in the waiting period. Is it okay for us to like uh, continue? Um, but uh, or start contributing for the issues? From the GitHub. Yes, yes. So uh, this is um, a, a general comment. I just going to well, okay to go on mute because there's a, a loop back in there. So um, please continue. It's it's part of building your muscle, building your experience. Uh, there are a lot of candidates this year. A lot, and we only have a limited number of seats. But uh, with all the experience that you're gaining, uh, you will be able to compete again next year with a much better position uh, with the experience. And on the other side, professionally, also you continue to learn and see how the the community. Uh, uh, works. Uh, we'll also have uh, Oktoberfest, uh, which is another open source event. So uh, here, don't hesitate to continue. Uh, you're you're welcome, and we'll I, I'll try to arrange also to have uh, uh, people available from the community to guide you. It will be maybe less focused than with Google Summer of Code, but here. 
let's have fun together. Don't drop the effort. A lot of people spend a lot of energy uh, learning things, investing, and here we're a nice, nice group of people here. And we can also help each other uh, here. So uh, uh, don't hesitate also to help other uh, uh, students or young contributors uh, there. So a good question. Here, uh, I think we're going to leave it uh, that because I generally go up to the hour and each time my dog is getting upset because he's waiting behind the door to have his walk. <laughs> it's the evening here. Uh, so we'll we'll close the uh, the call here. Thank you very much for everybody to have uh, uh, joined. Uh, we'll we'll make a little bit more publicity on Gitter if people forget uh, the exact time uh, when the office hour uh, uh, starts. Been a pleasure to meet you all, uh, and um, see you then next week. Okay. Thanks, John Mark. Cheers. Bye bye. bye. Thank you, Alyssa, for joining. Sure. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thank you.